God will let no fire assail us, but that He intends to use it to establish His power and His glory in us. That trial that you're going through right now as a Christian has the ultimate purpose in the hands of God to show His power through your life and for His glory as a God of grace. Thanks for joining us on Life Journeys, a podcast about thriving through the worst pain that life brings. With global initiatives threatening big changes to our way of life, we're going to need to activate Jesus' words about mountain-moving faith. Words That Work is the ongoing series on life journeys that is rooted in releasing revelational words of faith that will work every time and with everyone. It's about moving the mountains that keep us from the presence and goodness of God. It's about defining our life purpose and identity through encountering Him. Until we have the power to move the obstacles that are destroying our liberty and hope, The other day an atheist asked me where God is in all this fighting in Israel. The answer is, He's right there. That's why they're fighting. The world has always hated the people of God, be they called Jews or Christians. But God made a promise to Israel 4,000 years ago in Abraham, and He will never let the nation of Israel be wiped off the earth. The question I always ask when hard things are happening is, God, why did you allow this? What's the right way to walk this out? You knew this was going to happen, and you let it happen for a reason. Why is Israel here? Why do you exist? Israel exists because God called it into existence over 4,000 years ago when Abraham walked the earth. God told Abraham, I will make of you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. The whole history of the Abrahamic covenant is for you right now, right here today. It's an example of the fact that God chooses people by His grace alone. But whether it be Israel's beginning with Abraham's grandson Jacob, living in 20 years of heartache, or Israel's heartache today, They are both a sign to you and I that, though being chosen by God is a great blessing, it will prove itself out in having to face some of the greatest storms of our life. It's a formidable process to be shaped by the testing and refining fire that makes men and women of courage, integrity, faithfulness, and love. Sometimes that takes a long time. Listen, whether it be a precious soul or a nation, God will take us through the storms of hatred, injustice, and heartache that this world will heap on us, and He'll make people of honor as gold refined in the fire. Israel is deeply hurting today, but God's intention is to mold them into a firebrand for His glory. One day I wrote, In the quiet of the evening when the day is spent, and my depleted energy seems to have little to show for it, and I feel like I've missed completing my purpose. When the setting sun shouts out to me that my soul's light is going out for sorrow, he comes into the room. I can almost feel his hand reach out to lift my chin upward. It's as if he looks into my eyes and fills the dim memory of my joy with a peace that is so overwhelming that the stillness seems like a flood. The Spirit of grace has jump-started my life as my heart seems to shout out, He really does want me. He sees me and has given me what my heart has been searching for all day in its weary steps. It is well with my soul. Abraham had to learn to believe God when things looked impossible. He spent many years in Egypt learning to let go and let God. After 25 years of waiting for a son as God's promised inheritance, he was greatly tested when God asked him to give up his only son, Isaac. He had to be willing to let go of him and put his very reason for being back into the hands of God. When he obeyed, God stopped him and said, Now I know that you fear me, and in blessing I will bless you. 
I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven, and your seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. That same principle works itself out in our lives. Every one of us who accept God's choice. Now, as the years passed, Abraham's grandson Jacob was chosen by God as well to be his heir, even though he was not the firstborn. God was showing that his salvation is by his sovereign choice and not according to how good or how bad we have been. God just loved Jacob, though he was a deceiver, and he had to learn how to live and walk by faith in God's choice instead of doing the right thing his own way. So he was sent to his uncle Laban, who would cheat Jacob over and over again for twenty years. But Jacob learned through this to trust God and just keep his head down. Jacob was the target of injustice and deceit. His circumstances of trouble would be a mirror that showed him what he had sowed he was also going to reap. Thus he would learn to trust God. All the while, he was raising a family of twelve sons through great deception and heartache. What he didn't realize at the time of his great sifting was that God was birthing the promise of Abraham to raise up a nation. What Jacob saw as his trouble was actually the birthing of that nation. On Jacob's journey back to his homeland in Canaan, after twenty years, God changed his name from Jacob to Israel. His sons would become the twelve tribes of Israel. God would show the world through his sovereign choice of Israel that his promise always comes through testing until faith has become man's greatest resource. I call it Jacob's mirror when life has gotten hard and I realize that God is using my greatest trials to form a vessel that can walk in his glory and honor. He's using my trials to show me what I'm like and how I need to change. God will let no fire assail us, but that he intends to use it to establish his power and his glory in us. And the same thing is God's intention for Israel today. Now, Jacob's son Joseph would be chosen by God as well to carry the birthright of Israel, and consequently he was persecuted by his brothers, left for dead, and kidnapped by Egypt. But Joseph trusted in God in the many times he too was unjustly treated until he rose to second in command in the entire nation of Egypt, and then God used him to save Egypt and his brothers. But sovereign choice can take a long time. God left them in Egypt for over 400 years until Moses would deliver them and lead them back through the wilderness and the Red Sea to the present-day Israeli borders. It was again through severe testing by enemy armies, the threat of starvation, and all the rigors of the desert where God was leading Israel to trust Him no matter what. For literally centuries, Israel would tempt God with their idols until they became a divided and conquered nation. When Babylon, which is present-day Iran and Iraq roughly, When Babylon came to carry them all away into captivity, they resisted and persecuted the prophet Jeremiah, who said, You're not going to win this fight because of your sin. You will be defeated. So they put him in prison. It was during this time when the prophets Ezekiel and Daniel were given an understanding of what would happen to Israel in the last days. There would be a time, often called Jacob's Trouble, where Israel and the entire world would be engulfed in great tribulation. It would be the culmination of God's plan to choose a people and then bring them through the fire until they either were established in His sovereign choice by faith or they would perish in unbelief. Israel today has been a nation again for over a generation. Though they did come back from Babylon to rebuild Jerusalem and claim their land, their country was overrun by the Romans and later the Turks in the Ottoman Empire, and finally was subject to British rule until after the Holocaust. Israel exists today as a promise of God. They provide the very roots of salvation for both Jew and Gentile through Christ, whom they crucified. 
the cutting off of their branches and the grafting in of all other nations of the world into the vine of the kingdom of God would be used to bring Israel back into the root. All of this history of the people of God throughout millenniums was to show the world the need for a Savior. The law was given by Moses to be what Paul calls a schoolmaster to bring us all to Christ. But learn from Israel's history and present-day troubles that the choice of God comes with a season of testing in our own wilderness experience to refine and purify us until our trust in self has been completely surrendered to God. Only through faith in Christ will there ever be victory, whether it be in Israel or in our own times of sorrow. God has chosen Israel as a sign that he has chosen all who will believe on him. He allowed Egypt to rise up and hold Israel captive to show his power in Israel for his own name's sake. It took a long time, just as it's going to take a long time as God allows testing in our own lives and testing in national Israel. God has not forgotten one thing. The world and your own life are progressing exactly according to his purposes for our deliverance. That trial that you're going through right now as a Christian has the ultimate purpose in the hands of God to show His power through your life and for His glory as a God of grace. Our worst in this world is just a seedbed on which eternal power is being established. Jesus Himself went through the worst the world could offer at the hands of the Pharisees and the Romans so that resurrection life might come to everyone. The worst that men can do to you or to Israel is only being used to bring out the truth about the hearts of men everywhere. God's going to vindicate his choice of Israel one day as he brings them through the fire. His promise to save them from the worst that sin has done is his demonstration to you that he's faithful to all who will trust him. As Israel has and is going through devastating trials, so the church has and is suffering persecution. Why? Because if they hated Christ, they will hate you and God will let it happen, but only for a season. In the meantime, His glory and presence will lift us up just as it did in the time of the first martyrs. People, everything is not falling apart. Everything is coming together. You can unlock the presence of God in your life. There are revelation principles that remove the mountains, keeping us from joy, hope, peace, and purpose when our world gets turned upside down. Look for these words that work with Pastor Hardika as he shares what has helped him when life got hard. And don't forget to check out his book, The Fortress and the Firebrand, available on Amazon and Barnes & Noble. Thanks for listening to Life Journeys. Find new episodes every Wednesday and Saturday. And if you're new to this series, it begins with the September 16th episode. God will let no fire assail us, but that he intends to use it to establish his power and his glory in us. That trial that you're going through right now as a Christian has the ultimate purpose in the hands of God to show his power through your life and for his glory as a God of grace.